Welcome back. As you can see, the starlet here is all jacked up. Now I've finally bit the bullet and decided that I'm going to turbocharge this thing. It's something I've been humming and harring about for quite a while, but I finally decided that this car is going to be the candidate to get a turboed 4 age and I'll be taking this small port motor out and that'll eventually go into my into my Toyota Corolla drift car. So, um, yeah, so there's a bunch of fabrication to do now, now that I've decided to do this. So this video, I've built a complete exhaust manifold, stainless steel exhaust manifold, and so I'm going to run through the entire process of mocking it up, building a jig, building the manifold, and um, yeah, sure to show you the process I go about making a manifold. Uh, it's turned out pretty good. I've, this, I've, I'm filming this at the end, so I've, I've, it's already done, um, and I'm happy. Yes, it turned out great as far as I'm concerned. So uh, yes, yeah, sit back and watch. Hopefully, hopefully enjoy it, see, and hopefully learn something. Um, yeah, cheers. So, got a few cars in the shed at the moment. Just trying to keep them out of the weather, keep them dry. So I've got the start of the year. I've jacked it up and it's sitting on my caster, raised caster wheels here, caster dollies. So I'm just going to get ready to pull the exhaust off, pull the exhaust manifold off, and the distributor out. Uh, get those out of the way and ready to make uh, make the space to start making the turbo manifold. So I'm going to pull the distributor out because I'm going to be with the engine setup I'm going to run. I'm going to run it without a distributor with a different um, trigger system. So get rid of those and then can start uh, mounting the turbo where I want it and then start fabricating the manifold. As you can see, remove those, made the room now for what I need to do. So I've got here a bunch of the bits. So first off, the turbo I'm using. So this is an IHI branded turbo. It's a VF22, which is off the STI WRXs, um, as far as I know. Uh, sort of regarded as the, the best factory turbo uh, of that era of, of cars um, so it would have been on a, I think the two litre motors I don't know Savara is that well um, but yeah so I figured I bought that quite cheap and they're known to be quite a good turbo so I thought this would be a good fit for this motor now I've got this exhaust flange here that my friend Matt cut up for me he's he cut me two actually he cut me this one and another one to suit a natural aspirated set of headers so I've got two of those so it's because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do and I've purchased all these 90 and 45 degree stainless bends and some straight. Uh, these are all 32 nominal bore uh, tubing. So what 32 means is 32 millimeter inside diameter. Um, so I'm just going to have a bit of a squiz through all this stuff. Um, I've got a bit of a contraption to mount the turbo in the engine bay to set it where I want. So I'll get that out and set it up. Now I'm pretty pretty keen to low mount this turbo um, somewhere down here. Uh, I want to try and keep the engine bay looking, <laughs> not that it's natural aspirated, but I want to kind of keep the look of it. So um, although this motor's going, I'm going to put quad throttles on it um, and I want to kind of have high rise sweeping um, pipes into the, into the turbo. And so when I did when I was building this car up, I did make sure I had room because I thought I might do this. I did make sure I had room for an intercooler there. So um, if I can get the turbo mounted quite low down here, there's a nice opening in here for the intercooler pipe to come out. So I'm going to try and keep all the piping nice and short. Uh, I think, I haven't quite decided, but I think for a manifold, like I said, it'll be quad throttles. And I might try and make the, the entry into the manifold quite low down as well so it can go to the same. Um, get through here for them to call the piping so but for now I'm gonna um, yeah test fit a few things uh, mount the turbo where I want it work out some positions have a bit of a bit of a to-do and then um, then I can start working on fabricating this manifold As you can see, I've got my turbo hung here. So a while ago, I made this tool up here, which uh, is awesome. 
it's great for when you got to do this when you got to either hold a turbo somewhere or make a manifold so it just supports itself on the on the wings of the engine bay you can clamp up the tighten those up keep it keep it tight it's got this here so you can slide this along adjust the thread up and down clamp it all tight when you're done and so what I do is I just make a little adapter to bolt it to bolt it to the core somewhere. You can either use the the, um, the oil feed, or in this case, I've actually used the drain, and I've just got the core flipped over, which which won't make it which won't matter for, for locking it up. So by holding it from the core, it means I can get the turbo sitting wherever I like, forward or back, up and down, anything, change the angle, change change everything, and it also means that I can spin the compressor housing where I want it. And also the turbine housing. So, in the past, I've tried you know blocks of wood and things to support turbos, and it's just an absolute mission. So, I made this up, and it really just allows you to get the turbo exactly where you want it. Compare parts, make sure piping's in a clear, oil feeds, all drains, exhaust, everything, and then orientate the covers where you want. And then once I've done that, then I can um, make a jig to hold the <coughs> the um, exhaust manifold flange and then the turbine manifold flange so um, I'll spend a bit of time getting this turbo where I want it to be and then uh, we'll go from there. So I showed you the bits I had, the flange for the exhaust manifold for the head, um, I don't have a flange for this so I'm going to have to make a flange for this turbo here and once I've done that then a collector and then the rest so I'll spend a bit of time getting this sorted and then we'll go from there. First step to making a flange for this turbine housing is just to make a template. So I like to take a piece of paper or a card or something, lay it on top, hold it firm, and use a grubby finger or something to just rub your finger around all the edges, making sure you get the bolt holes, and make sure you hold the bit of paper nice and firm so it doesn't move, and you'll get a nice accurate outline of what you need to cut out. Nice and simple. The one time a grubby finger is actually helpful. marked out my bit of stainless steel here obviously like you saw so I'm going to take this 44 mil hole saw drill the hole through now I'm going to hole saw it before I cut it out just so I can clamp the piece in the vise nicely so I'm going to cut the center out uh, then I'll cut the outside and what I will do is I will actually clamp it back onto the turbo uh, to mark out the, the bolt up holes accurately I could kind of go off those but I want to make sure it's all all bang on um, and then maybe even port match the housing and this um, this flange once I've got it bolted on before I go and build a collector for it. So I'm gonna hole saw that now. Now the trick when using hole saws, or hole saws especially on stainless, but this goes for other steels as well, uh, nice low speed and lots of coolant and a good amount of pressure seems to be the key, what I've found anyway. So you go too fast and you risk burning out the hole saw and same if you lack the coolant, so we've got this set reasonably slow and we'll be piling the coolant in there.
So I've got this flange all cut out and holes drilled. Now I'm just going to move on to tapping the holes. Um, now I've made this flange out of 14 mil stainless, so it's, it's pretty thick actually. Um, the reason I've gone with 40 mils is because that's what I've got lying around. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to tap it so that the bolts can can bolt into the flange. Um, now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drill out these three holes here. They are currently 11 mil, so I'm going to drill them to 12, uh, just so that I can use 12 more bolts. Uh, also, so then the bolts can actually sort of spigot this onto the flange, try and locate it properly. And the reason I've kind of decided to go with the 12 and drill these out rather than 10 mil is quite often a lot of low mount turbos are prone to bolts coming loose and leaking. So I do what I can to try and really retain it on there. So I thought bigger bolts, a bit more clamping force, uh, fine thread, and well, yeah, those those reasons, those reasons actually. Um, and just like I said, just to try and help locate this onto here so I can port match it and that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna tap this now and then I'll draw that out and check that it fits. So I've got my flanges uh, tacked together and off the car. So now I need to make up a jig that'll hold the two flanges exactly where I need them so then you can start making the manifold. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, um, make a flange for this flange to bolt to, weld it onto this, give it a nice sturdy flat base for this to be bolted to. So go back onto there, and then I need to make a bracket that bolts off this nice and securely to hold this flange in place and then once I've done that I can cut these away and then that'll give me a nice solid jig to work off and then start building the tubes. We've got the jig all finished up now. It's a fair bit of work to make one of those. Um, and I guess I probably could have got away without making one um, or made it a bit a bit less thorough, but uh, I know I'll probably end up making something more in the future, so making this jig is, um, is good for future use. I've also made this, <coughs> this part to hold the turbo flange, uh, made it bolt on, so if I ever wanna make a natural aspirated set of heaters or something with a different turbo flange on it, I can just make a new make a new bar. So so this will get used in the future I'm sure. So now I just unbolted that so I can now go and cut these bars away, clean up where the welds were, and then bolt them back up and then now that will allow me to 
start making it. So this will act as a real good heat sink and it will help hold the flanges flat when I weld it and also just hold them in the right place so it's going to make my job a hell of a lot easier now. So got this all ready to go now. Now next job is to start on the collector. So we've got 400 mil lengths of the uh, tubing I'm going to use. Now I need to cut and weld these to make a collector. <laughs> Simple as that. Now this piping here, like I said earlier, is 32 nominal bore and as you can see it's pretty much the size of the hole going into the turbo so um, I do have to reduce, when I make the collector it has to reduce down quite small. Um, I do, I'm not too worried about making it fit exactly, it can be a bit bigger and then I can port match it from the other side and it can, it can funnel in there which is alright. So I'm going to take these, um, what I need to do that focus is I basically need to make two pairs of V's basically so I'm going to be cutting each one like that roughly so then these will overlap and join roughly on that angle do both of them and then once I've cut and tacked those back together then I'll turn them this way both pairs and do the same make a V cut them again and join them all together and that should give me a nice even collector with all four, roughly, I'm just going to sort of something like something like that as the entrance, but then with them all tilting in like that to get the funnel into into the flange there. Probably make a bit more sense which, once I start cutting and show you, but I'm going to go mark those out and cut them now, and then you'll, you'll see what I mean. got those all cut off there. Now what I ended up going with was I've cut it in half along here and it's 50mm from the top down to that cut line there. Uh, that was just sort of a random guess to see what it would look like. Now one thing, you've got to, one thing you can do and one thing I've done is when these actually, because I've cut them in half at the top here, it's end up going to, that there's rough, you know, roughly going to be the size of one pipe and then once I do that again, it should all shrink it down to about the same size as the pipe, which I'll show the actually fits inside. But you do need to start off with it a bit smaller, because then, because it's on a taper, like, well, so once it's like that, we end, up, we end up cutting it off a bit higher anyway, so then the hole will become bigger, so it's good to always start with it a bit smaller than you need. And also, um, cutting the, the angle a bit, um, a bit shallower, I guess you call it, or more the opposite, um, to start off with, because you can always trim more to, to bring this angle in a bit closer, a bit more like, like that if needed be, rather than if you go and cut it straight away and find <clears throat> the angle is too steep, uh, then you can't really change it. So by starting off the way I have, um, it gives you the room to move. So I'm going to tack these two together now and then I'm going to sit it up here and have a look and see if I'm happy and if I'm happy I'll then cut the other angle and then weld the four together. So I've got that all tacked up there, it's looking alright. It's quite wide at the top, but I think because I'm going to cut it down a fair bit, it should be alright. So that fits in there, quite alright. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that end of it open so it fits the flange properly. And then once I've done that and I'm happy with it, then I'll chop the tops. 
um, and then I will weld it all up and then we'll get it tacked on and placed in here. So I've got that collector all trimmed up and it's looking pretty good. Now if you can see inside there you can see it's a bit bigger than the hole so once it's all welded up I'll port match that to, to all flow nicely. Now I'm just going to work out how I'm going to orientate it in this direction. I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can do the manifolds sort of however you like but I'm going to do them in firing order so it'll go one, three, ah oh, sorry, one, three, four, two. So I'll probably orientate these two here in the closest direction to number three and four cylinder just to try and so I can get those as short as I can and then these two here will have to be a bit longer to try and get all four pipes to match the same length. It's not critical they're the same length but it, it's definitely a good good practice to try and do so that's what I'll likely do. Like I said, orientate that to get that right and then also making sure that I can still fit the pipes in to get to what, number one and two. Um, also when you're building these you've got to be really careful that every join you make you're actually going to be able to weld it because you can quite often build yourself into a trap where you can't access a, a weld so you've got to be very very mindful of that when you build one of these so I'm just going to clean this up and then tack this on and then I can start placing each pipe. times but just I'd make them and then realise they looked a bit weird or didn't really work so it's turned out pretty reasonable. I haven't really measured the run length. Um, I actually highly doubt that they're even but anyway I sort of did what I could. Um, I actually ran out of straw or nearly ran out of straight which sort of bugged me I think that's about all I had left so I was a little bit limited at the end there but I think it's turned out right. So I'm going to unbolt it and just do a bit of a quick check in the car, make sure the clearance, make sure everything clears. And then if it does, I'll um, stick it back in the jig and we'll get to welding it up properly. So as you can see I've split the manifold back apart and I've got the collector on there now ready to weld up so I'm going to go and bung all the holes and get ready to purge it and then weld it up. Now the reason I'm going to purge this is being stainless steel uh, without purging it it'll, it, it, it really oh, what you call sugars or, or oxidizes on the internal part of the weld so by purging it what it means is we're putting argon, inert gas, which is what you use for welding, to, to welding. We're going to put it 
into the inside as well. So when I weld the outside, the inside of this where the welders will will stay nice and um, nice, will, will fuse nicely rather than sugar. So um, use tin foil and my regulator here in my bottle has got a double outlet. So I plumb a line in, get that going, and then I'll weld this up. As you can see, I've got the collector all welded and each individual pipe all welded up now. So I've just prepped the flange and put it all back on ready to weld it together. Now I've just temporarily checked each pipe and you can see I've just put little sharpie marks on here. Uh, earlier on I talked about the pipes moving and changing as you weld them so it's happened as it always sort of does. So each one is so like on this one here the pipe needs to shift right a little bit this pipe needs to go down a little bit and these two need to just come in a little bit so they're all off um, and I think what I'm going to do well, I'm going to try it at least is I'm just going to undo this flange from here um, and just see if I can sort of orientate this in a position where they all get close enough to weld them up now it's not really what you should do um, but in this car and this turbo, turbo position the clearances aren't tight, the turbo can actually sit in lots of different places so it doesn't really matter so I'm happy to sacrifice a little bit of displacement in the turbo flange for them all to line up. Um, if you really needed the turbo exactly where it was you would then have to maybe modify the pipes or something just to get it all to work in but I'm going to give that a shot and I'm just going to loosen it off, see if I can move it in a position where they all line up pretty good and if that's the case then I will, um, I will just weld it up there. Now because I've already welded this collector together, um, the flange is now not going to work from the pipes. But as long as I keep this flange bolted up tight, that'll be fine. So I can I can afford to move this, but definitely not have this loose. So I'm going to do that now and see how it looks. So I've just had another test fit of all those. And so I've just loosened that off like I said and I've only moved it probably about 3mm just that way slightly. So the holes don't line up but um, that's all it really needed to get them all to line up pretty good so I've just clamped it there and I'm going to tack it up now as it is.
so that's all welded up now turned out pretty pretty blooming good really pretty happy with it it's um it actually probably almost looks cooler as I mounted this way but never mind it's um yeah now it welded up good um I'm not the king of penetration so <coughs> it um hasn't penetrated right through all the welds but um I'm happy as with what it is so I'm just going to let it cool down properly uh, not get it nice and cold before I take it off and then I'm going to go and stick it on the car and see how it looks pretty wrapped it's cool got that back on the car now for a, for a look at it it's turned out real good I'm real happy it's just temporarily put on there now for now it's done um, there's still a couple of things to do on it one which is facing off both the flanges and then just port matching them but I'm going to leave it for now and I'm going to do it once um, uh, once I have the proper motor that's going to go in because this motor will come out and I'll, I'll put together a different motor um, and just do a bunch of things then but for now that's, that's, that's done so I'm going to bolt it all up properly and get things we'll get things with it well get it all bolted up properly and start work on the rest of the stuff so now I need to do downpipe and exhaust I need to get an intercooler mount it up the front and start doing the piping uh, do the oil feed and drain all that sort of stuff and then work on an inlet manifold so there's a lot to do um, but I thought this would be this would be great content for, for one video making the manifold so I'll end it here and then um, I'll start working on the rest of it and start working towards getting another video about the rest of the fabrication on this so I'm wrapped it's turned out cool as a little bit different to what I was first expecting but um, yeah it's, I like that it's a bit different and um, nah it's cool it's uh, definitely it's made the new band of a hell of a lot nicer and compared to those old rusty hitters, so no, I'm wrapped. So that's one step of the many to get this car back on the road and back together. So there's plenty more to do. Next step's going to be, like I said, uh, downpipe and exhaust. So look out for the next video. Uh, if you've got any feedback, hit me up. If you have things you want to see or things you think I'm doing wrong or whatever, hit me up. I'm, I'm always open to ideas. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, look out for the next one. Cheers.